Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's me and the Kim Bates. Today, we're going to talk about how to build your one-year marketing strategy and plan. And like I said, we're going to be covering it in two parts. For the first section, we're going to look at exactly what is a marketing strategy and how you go about planning for your marketing objectives. We're going to take a look at what a SWOT analysis is and why it's important. SWOT stands for your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and how that can play into your marketing. We'll take a look at branding. We're gonna take a look at the five Ps of marketing, as well as how to identify your ideal target market and then set up those marketing objectives and understanding the customer experience. All right. Then we'll take a little break, like I said, between 11, 11, 15, somewhere around there. And um, for part two, we'll take a look at brand recognition and generating sales, getting a competitive edge different marketing toolkits that you can use and templates you can use to design your annual plan, marketing budgets, which is hugely important, the relationship building and networking strategies for small businesses. It doesn't always just have to be digital. And I mean, I'm a digital marketing specialist, so that's kind of my area of strength, but there's a whole marketing world outside of just the digital world. And that includes relationship building. And then next and then lastly, we'll talk about the latest marketing trends and technology. And as Natalie said, I have been delivering this presentation for a few years now. So it's been really nice to see the evolution of marketing because now we have AI, which is making marketing so much easier, quicker, faster, and more effective if you know how to use it. So I'm excited to talk about that part in the presentation. All right. Um, so what I what I like to do before I start every meeting is just get an understanding of what marketing is to you. And I love, you know, as much, if there's a lot of interaction and engagement, it makes the presentation really exciting and you'll get a lot out of it. So I'm curious to know, what is marketing to you? Because everybody kind of has a different idea of marketing. And then what challenges you guys face around marketing so just feel free to like put up your hand or you can just start to speak because we don't have that many people with us today but so um yeah who wants to uh who wants to let me know what their definition of marketing is uh i think it's about ads how you make it uh famous among the customers okay so ads all right and do you mean paid ads or um just promoting advertisement, on advertisement. All advertisement. Okay. So marketing to you is advertising. All right. Anybody else? Uh, I think marketing is how you choose to craft your value proposition for whatever it is that you're doing to your potential customers. Oh. Okay. So how you craft your position to attract your potential customers. That's what you said? Yeah. Your value proposition. Your value proposition. Okay. That's a very good and detailed, sophisticated answer. All right. And then we have... Ben Manrutter, I'm probably saying your name incorrectly. <laughs> yeah, Ben Ben Maunder. Um, yeah, I agree with what was just said, but I think it then, uh, and maybe I'm spoiling your presentation a little bit later, but it's all about uh, what your product is, where it's placed, how it's promoted, um, how it's priced, and um, who's involved, as in the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are going to be covering some of that with the five Ps. That was awesome. Okay, and then Richard, and then we have Shantanu. Yes, I think that sounds okay. <laughs> All right, so Richard, do you want to go first? What's marketing to you? Yeah, hi. Uh, marketing is the process of getting people to be interested in your product, you know, kind of uh, advertising it and uh, showcasing it and um, getting them to buy your products and basically getting uh, revenue out of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get revenue out of it because it is a business. Um, And then lastly, we have Shantanu. Yeah, I think uh, marketing to me is creating that relationship with, with your end users or end customers. Um, And like, I think that's where I think and creating a long term relationship through a brand um, so that uh, it's not just about one product or service that we are offering today. Um, that is solving their problem, but it's about like creating like a long term, um, getting the long term value out of your customer. Um, and secondly, I think 
marketing is about creating desirability of your products and offerings in customers minds so that um they know where to go <laughs> when the okay. need of it yeah wow well why don't you just teach the class <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you guys gave some really very great, detailed, sophisticated answers. And and um, Ying always sends me the um, student profile list. And I know that some of you guys already have some international business experience. So I can tell in some of these answers that uh, you guys know what you're talking about. Okay, so we, we've heard a couple of different things about what marketing is and what different ideas people have about what marketing is. Now I want to know what are some of the challenges? So we talked about, you know, developing that customer relationship, positioning and attraction. We talked about um, long-term relationship. We talked about ads. So what are some of the challenges that a business owner or entrepreneur or corporation might face with regards to challenges, what, what challenges may they face with regards to marketing and doing all of those things that you guys said marketing is? What are some of the challenges of engagement, the challenges of advertising, the challenges of positioning? What are the challenges? Yes, Chidna, Chidma. Say you, I want you guys to say your name for me before you talk. Yeah, Chidma. Chidma, yes. Yeah, okay, Chidima. beautiful well, I think that, um, Businesses face challenges along every line of marketing. Like, for instance, using the four piece of marketing, for instance, even to decide the right product, how to package the product, what size and all of that. Businesses may face challenges with that because if you package it in a size or, you know, in a way that it's not desirable to clients, even with your pricing itself, with where you choose to position yourself, with what uh, promotion channel you choose to do, whether you want to do, you know, top of line or below line marketing and all of that. So I think that um, just looking at the four pieces of marketing that at every point of that, that businesses face challenges in, in choosing how to go about it. Yeah, it is challenging. Okay. And then we've got, say your name, Shantanu, because I'm just making it up. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's Shantanu. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you nailed I it. <laughs> My name is Nakimbe. So, I mean, I, I feel the pain for everybody's name who I butcher. I go through it myself. <laughs> so go ahead. No, you did a great, um, great job there, Nikimbe. <laughs> um, so I think the, the challenges from my perspective that maybe entrepreneurs face in marketing, uh, number one is like initially when you're spending money on marketing, uh, like, you know, and, and you're, you're still not seeing conversion rates, you know, and that to me seems a little bit discouraging in like in the initial phases when you're getting started in business because you're like, you know, you're spending money, but you're seeing maybe like in digital platforms, you're seeing views, but thousands of views, but because of like lack of maybe reviews, um, like social proof um, from like, because you don't have existing customers. And, and, and that, that's when, you know, I feel really, I don't know, like disheartened a little bit when you're seeing your money go, but not creating impact. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Marketing is really challenging. Like I'm excited to get into the presentation. I, um, I was just, I just did a podcast interview with a, a guy and he was saying how, you know, you have to be willing and we'll talk about this later on when we get to the, the budgeting part of it, but you have to save in advance before, you know, a lot of business people get into business hoping to make money. But what you really need to do before you even launch your business is make sure that you save enough money for advertising down the line, because you have to be willing to test. You have to be willing to lose money. And you don't think of it as a loss. Think of it as an investment. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the gurus will tell you, sometimes you have to do things consistently and that's one of the challenges of marketing. I don't know if anyone's going to bring that up, um, but you have to do it consistently sometimes for a year or three, six, nine months to a year to build up that momentum, to build up the trust, to have the learnings, right? So mm -hmm. in my experience, what I've come to know now is people need to know how much marketing is, and we're going to get into that and put that money aside before you do anything else. Because once you get into your business and you're making money, all of your money goes back into your business. You're not going to want to, you know, save any of it. And sometimes you can't, like sometimes income doesn't come in, but you still have staff or you still have software. So money still has to go out, even if money is not coming in. So if you just 
put aside a little testing nest egg before you start your entrepreneurial journey, journey, it will save you a lot of psychological trauma. I promise you. <laughs> All right. Great answer. So yes, the investing in marketing and not seeing a return, that is really, really hard. Okay. And then Ben, say your name for me again. I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Ben Monder. Ben Monder. Ben Monder. Yeah. Okay. I, w- or, I didn't want to shorten it because people or, sometimes call me Kim or Nikki. I'm like, no. It is like okay. So I didn't well, want to shorten you to Ben, but as as we used to get uh, in in the Netherlands, we used to have um, Mounder was uh, how it tended to be pronounced when I lived over there, um, and and I think that's another uh, challenge is the communication part. So you're okay. trying to get a message across, but how is that message actually landing with your potential customers or? customers and how do you test that marketing message uh, can be a really big challenge in terms of communication models. It can be. I mean, an idea or a simple, it sounds simple. A simple solution would be to like do surveys and stuff, but it's not always easy to do that. So it, it can be challenging to get feedback. And sometimes that's when you have to come up with creative incentives, like, you know, fill out the survey and we'll do this because that customer feedback is, a, is valuable. Um, also, even if you get a market research company or you get focus groups, you have to pay for those, right? So, yeah, Going getting the, the money. Back, mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> everything is about money, man. All right. And then we have Hengame. Say your name for me, please. Hi, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I am, I am Hengame. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, uh, in my opinion, uh, I'm uh, with uh, Ben uh, for myself. Uh, marketing was challenging bef- um, in a sort of that in connecting with uh, customers and saying what uh, introduce myself that uh, what I'm uh, what I want to do and another things so connecting in my opinion for uh, business um, woman is was so hard for myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is that? I, I, I was sure. I, I am sure about my product. I, uh, I am selling uh, design packages and AI marketing, as you uh, mentioned about that. But uh, when I want to uh, speak about my uh, product, I said, "Is it enough good to um, say about that? Is it correct?" And a lot of uh, this stuff. Maybe that's because of low self esteem or low self confidence. But connecting is uh, the first. Uh, a challenge for me that uh, I did uh, I didn't want to uh, continue my marketing with customers. Okay, all right, those are interesting challenges. I've heard um, what you're saying reminds me of something another lady said, which is I always talk about the importance of video marketing, and if you don't have any money, that video marketing is the best, most effective way um, to start generating leads. And I think YouTube is one of the best channels to start on because people are going there to search. So they're looking for a solution. Whereas in regular social media, hold on guys, I am going to stop my camera for a second and close the window because they're doing landscaping outside and it's really distracting. So I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. Okay. That's much better. Go camera. There we go. Anyway, so her challenge was she didn't want, she was posting a little bit on YouTube, but then she got some negative comments and it really hurt her feelings. And then she was just kind of too traumatized to ever market on YouTube again. And so, yeah, there there are also a lot of psychological barriers and um, pushback or criticism or a lack of conversions from customers that can hurt your feelings and can really be, you know, difficult and kind of make marketing discouraging. And I think that that's why through all of my learning and working with thousands of businesses now is I think preparation before the journey is important. And I have my MBA, I'm going to get into my credentials in a little bit. Um, And so that's all about business. I've worked with some of the top corporations in the world and they're very competitive. And so I come from the school when it comes to marketing and business of like Sun Tzu, which is um, the art of war because business, like real business, like not little entrepreneurs, but like top line corporations, they have, they have company espionage. There's all like competition is really stiff in some of these higher corporations. Um, 
And so what they, they need to really differentiate themselves and um, like make themselves stand out to win in the marketplace. Anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about because business can be like war, if you prepare yourself ahead of time mentally, like I was saying, put that money aside. If you kind of go into marketing and business, knowing it's going to be a war, knowing it's going to be a challenge, knowing that there are going to be ups and downs, you'll be okay to navigate through those tough times. But if you don't know that going in and you're just like, la, 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 I'm going to have a business. Nope. You get slapped with marketing budgets. You get slapped with regulation. You get slapped with unhappy customers, slapped with algorithm changes. I mean, so my advice to all entrepreneurs would be to just suit up and and gear up for battle before you go into entrepreneurship. That's what I would say. Okay. So anyway, moving on from that, one of the things that I did in my company to differentiate myself, because I think somebody else on here also does digital marketing, and it's highly competitive. Everybody and their brother, sister's little niece knows how to do a website where they can do a website on their own or you know, they don't have money for social media, so they'll do it themselves or they'll get a staff person to do it, right? So me having a marketing company was very competitive. I had to differentiate myself. One of the ways that you guys can differentiate yourself in the marketplace is by positioning yourself as a thought leader, coming up with new and inventive, innovative, dynamic ways to position yourself, your company, your products, your services differently than your competitors so people will flock to you. One of the things that I um, did was in order to differentiate myself, I came up with the 10 commandments of marketing. So anybody can have a social media company, but that doesn't mean that they can get articles written about them in Forbes magazine or articles written about them in Business Week. In order for people to pay attention to you, you need to have something different that stands out in the marketplace. So again, for me, that was the 10 commandments. And I'm going to tell you those 10 commandments of marketing right now, because again, in my 25 years of experience, and I think you guys get handouts, but make sure you take a screenshot or you pay particular attention to this part of the presentation because I'm going to get into a lot of detail. We're going to hear, we're here for like two hours, two and a half hours. It's a lot of information and you may forget a lot of things, but if you at least remember the 10 commandments, and it, again, it's a play, right? Because, you know, most people are familiar with the 10 commandments. So again, it's, a play. I'm trying to get people to recognize something. I'm trying to get people to, you know, when you think about the 10 commandments, if you follow the 10 commandments, you're supposed to have a good life and go to heaven. Right. So for me, you know, differentiating myself in the marketplace and trying to um, position myself as an leader or authority, I came up with these 10 commandments of marketing. And it's the same kind of thing. If you follow these 10 commandments of marketing, you will have heavenly results guaranteed. So again, if you forget everything I talk about in the presentation, if you remember these 10 commandments, you will be fine. I created these 10 commandments for my children because I'm an entrepreneur. I don't enjoy nine to five life. And I wanted to make sure that I equipped my children with the ability to effectively market any service or product online and to be able to make money from it. And because I'm their mother and there's all this, you know, information online, all these gurus want to tell you what to do, do TikTok, do this, do that. I wanted to tell my children, listen, guys, don't listen to any of that foolishness. Okay. Listen to mom. Mom has her degree. Mom has worked in, you know, corporate mommy knows what she's doing. Don't listen to those guys. Listen to mommy. And because they have no marketing or, or business experience, I had to simplify it for them. And I simplified it for them through these 10 commandments. And again, that was also a part of my marketing strategy. And I'm talking to you guys on a little bit of a high level because I think you guys can grasp it. Normally, I don't get into this to this level of detail, but I know I'm dealing with highly sophisticated entrepreneurs and marketers. So anyway, in addition to differentiating myself in a different, in, in addition to, um, positioning myself as a thought leader, I had to also create something that was um, recognizable and people can connect to. Using metaphors is very powerful in marketing. So again, the whole metaphor of the 10 commandments of life, the 10 commandments of marketing. And I told my children, if you guys just follow these 10 commandments of marketing, 
even with no business background, no marketing background, just follow these 10 commandments and you'll be all right. So that is basically where the 10 commandments of marketing came from. So th this is what it is. Let me minimize my screen here for a little bit. So um, I'm going to say all of them quickly and then I'll just go into each one with a little bit of detail. And again, I want you to pay attention to the fact that it rhymes. So there's a lot of strategy that goes behind some of the things that you guys see in marketing that you think is like, oh, that's just an ad or that's just a product or that's, there's so much thought and psychology that goes behind sophisticated marketing. So I've already told you, I use this to um, have a competitive edge, to differentiate myself, to position myself as a thought leader, to make it relatable. And now you're going to find out that it rhymes, right? Because I wanted it to be easy to remember and fun and cute and all of those things that help a brand, a service or product to kind of stick. And this is not the Nikimbe show. This is not all about me. I'm just telling you guys these things because I want you to understand them so you can maybe apply them in your business as well. How can you as a business owner stand out um, as, as a leader? How can you stand out as a thought leader? How can you differentiate yourself in the market? How can you make yourself more relatable? How can you use metaphors? Because it's highly competitive in today's marketplace. And I know you know that. And we already talked about budgets and how people don't have a lot of money. And sometimes you can invest money in marketing and it still doesn't work out. So if you master these 10 commandments, you can grow your business organically until you make enough money to invest in paid ads and scale. Because you will have had all of this information and gathering and feedback and what channels work and what don't and what messaging works and what is your ideal customer you will have gained all this research before you move into paid ads okay so these are the 10 commandments of marketing know thy business and to thy business be true know thy competitors ways and you'll never be blue shine thy light on what makes thou great honor thou audience segments in every single way um, number five, be thou not general or surely your business will fall ill. Number six, commit not off the cuff marketing, be targeted, use skill. Number seven, market smartly and only where it makes good sense. Number eight, monitor your results, Be do testing, be dense. Number nine, thou shall not rely solely on one marketing strategy. And number 10 is thou shall move to paid advertising only after testing organically. So again, know thy business and to thy business be true. Know thy competitor's ways and you'll never be blue. Shine thy light on what makes thou great. Honor thou audience segments in every single way. Be thou not general or surely your business will fall ill. Commit not off the cuff marketing. Um, be targeted, use skill. Market smartly and only where it makes good sense. Monitor your results, do testing, be dense. Um, thou shall not rely solely on one simple marketing strategy. And number 10 is thou shall move to paid ads only after testing organically. So this is all you ever have to follow. Um, Chantanu, I'll get to you in one quick second, but this oh. is what you have to do in your marketing, right? Before you set up your marketing, know your business, what you offer, how you're different, you know, like, what's your value? What are you good at? Why are you in this business? What's your brand story? Know your business. Number two, then you have to know your competitors. What are their strengths and weaknesses? How do you compare? Because your buyers are going to be comparing you. So know your business and then know your competitors. What makes you different or better? What's your competitive advantage? Market that. Talk about that. Position yourself in the marketplace. Then you find out who your ideal target is, and then you speak to them. So number five, you don't be general. You're not just selling dolls. You might be selling dolls to psychotherapists. You might be selling dolls to teachers. You might be selling dolls to retail stores, right? So you're selling dolls, but you're not just going to have one message. I sell dolls. We sell dolls. I sell dolls. We sell dolls. We No, we sell dolls to psychotherapists. Therefore, you have a specific campaign on specific channels targeting them. If you want to go to retail, you target them. So you can't be general. You have to be specific or like I said, your business will fall ill. Um, don't do off the cuff marketing. Don't be like, oh crap, I haven't posted today. What should I post? Plan in advance. 
right? Be targeted, use skill, market only where it makes good sense, just because TikTok is all the rage. And, you know, people, I made $7,000 billion while I was sleeping on TikTok. If your business is B2B, you need to be on LinkedIn. So market smartly and only where it makes good sense. You have to monitor your results. Look at your analytics. What works? What's the best time or day of engagement? What's the best platform? Where did you grow? Where did you slow, right? Monitor your results. Sometimes we're so busy in our business trying to survive. We don't have time to look at the numbers because we have to eat. But if you don't look at your numbers, you won't know what's growing, what to focus on so you can eat more in the future, right? And then don't just rely on one marketing strategy, try a couple different channels, a couple different messages, a couple different landing pages so that you can compare. So don't rely just on one marketing strategy. Maybe you wanna do digital and networking. Maybe you wanna do digital and demonstration, right? Mix it up. And then the last commandment is once you've done all those things and you have gained all this knowledge, then you will be equipped to successfully, strategically and smartly invest in paid ads. So that's the first part of my presentation every time before I get into the rest of it, because like I said, we're going to cover a lot over the next two hours. And if you get overwhelmed, all you ever need to do is come back to these 10 commandments. And then we're just going to jump into the presentation. So Shanta knew you had a question. Oh, this is amazing. Like very creatively done. Um, so thanks for sharing with us. Um, I have a question regarding the eight, um, commandment yeah and monitor that results do testing and be dense yeah so I, I would like to learn more in terms of like what do you mean by being dense you know um so okay. just so we understand it yeah perfect I'm glad you asked that question while I was reading it I wanted to explain it but I didn't want to lose the rhythm <laughs> so I just continued but what this means is monitor that results do testing and be dense and when I say be dense I kind of mean go deep with it. A lot of people do marketing in a very shallow kind of way. So here's a perfect example. Um, okay, people, again, I, like I said, I created this for my children so that they would follow strategy and not foolishness basically, right? And I'm saying that because one of the things people hear is, oh, you need to do video marketing. You need to do video marketing. You need to do video marketing. So, you know, a well-meaning entrepreneur might go online. How do I do video marketing? And it's like, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do that. But unless you, unless you practice and master one channel, you will not know it well enough to master it and execute it masterfully enough for you to get those results. Here's what I mean. Oh, video marketing is so important. Do video marketing. Oh, I'm going to do video marketing. Yay. Okay. So you might go on TikTok. Great. You're posting on TikTok. Or you might do YouTube shorts. Great. You're posting on YouTube shorts. Like, oh my gosh, I've been posting all these videos and I'm not getting any results. It's because you're not going deep enough. You have to understand that your like YouTube shorts, for example, your title matters. The keywords in your title matters. The length of your video matters. Even though YouTube short videos are a minute long, a lot of newbies will be like, I'm gonna make a, mi a minute long video. And then their channel or their videos don't take off because they don't go deep enough. They don't, they're just doing shallow marketing. They don't understand that what's important to the algorithms is watch time. So therefore, even though you can make a video that's a minute long, you should probably make a video that's like 22 seconds long. Because if you make a video that's like 22 seconds long, there's a better chance that someone's going to watch 100% of that video. Whereas if you have a video that's a minute long and they get bored after 20 seconds, they're going to log off and the algorithms are going to say, man, this video is not very good. People only watch 20% of the video. So watch time is important. Tags are important. Keywords in your titles are important. Having the right thumbnail is important. All of these little things are important in terms of getting the results you want from any one particular channel. What happens is people are like, oh, I did videos. How many videos did you do? You're supposed to do 30 to 50 to 100 videos before YouTube even pays attention to you. And most people will do like eight to 22 videos, right? 
you also need to post videos every day. The algorithms like consistency. And while that might seem overwhelming, if you batch produce your videos on the front, you can schedule them to auto deploy on these social media um, platforms and then gain all of these like rewards or, or points, right? So that's what this, and I'm glad you asked because I don't get a chance to get into these as deeply as I would like, but that's what that commandment means. Monitor um, your results, see what works, test things, do A-B testing, split test different titles, different thumbnails, because the slightest increase in conversion is money for you, right? If you can like increase your conversions from, you know, 2% to 5%, that's money for you, right? So you're never going to know what tweaks to make unless you're doing testing and you're not going to get the right results if you're just doing what I call is shallow marketing. You have to go deep with it and you have to be dense with it. You have to master each particular channel, like even um, let's say Instagram stories, right? Oh, I posted on stories. How long, how often did you post? They want you to post twice in the morning, twice in the afternoon, twice in the evening. If you don't know those things, you won't, you won't get the results. So you have to go deeply into each marketing platform to really understand it. Whereas most people just do some really shallow shit, pardon my language, <laughs> but that's what it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Thanks for that um, all detailed explanation on that. Thank you. No problem. All right. So now we're going to like jump into it. It's been a half an hour of good times, giggles and fun. Now we're going to get into the real hardcore stuff. So um, the way that we're going to be talking about all these different topics today, interactive opportunities, like, you know, we've been talking here today. I want you to be able to apply these learnings to your business. I believe you guys have access to handouts and, excuse me, practice sheets from um, Ying and Natalie I don't do any polls. I really should move this because I never do polls. But um, and then if you guys have questions, because we're a smaller group, you can just raise your hand and speak. But sometimes we just have answers in the Q&A or if you're shy, you can just put a question in the chat. I'll cover each topic for about 10, 12 minutes. Um, I'll talk about the topic and then we'll have two minutes conversation. So from what I see here. We've got a media company. We have got leadership consulting services. We've got financial services. We have affiliate marketing performance-based marketing strategy, okay? Um, with business rewards. Let's design ready packages that includes interior design, branding, exterior web design, okay? AI marketing, okay? Um, well, holistic solutions. We've got green sweet treats that, ooh, making natural fruit import, export, Dealership. Yep. I saw that one. Painting services, producing peanut butter with different natural flavors. I thought that was cool. And then hand embroidered clothing. So um, what I like about this presentation, what I like about the Ten Commandments is that it really, because I've worked with so many different businesses from startups to large blue chip fortune 500 companies. Um, I've been teaching classes like this. So I know entrepreneurial struggles and their concerns. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, all businesses need leads. You need to market your business and showcase it so that people can know about it. They become a lead and then that lead, you know, sticks around a little bit more and then they become a prospect. They're like, okay, yeah, I think I might buy it. And then they become a customer. It's not just like somebody sees your ads and they whip out their, their credit cards because you don't behave that way in the real world. And even though as a business owner, you want your buyers to act that way, they don't, right? They look, they select, they get on the email list, they try it out, they consider their options, they investigate you a little bit further, they feel a little bit convinced, they overcome their own objections, and then they buy, right? So the point is, it doesn't matter what industry you are in, the Ten Commandments and lead generation apply to everybody across the board in all businesses. So this is just everybody's um, industry just blown up a little bit more. All righty. So a little bit about me. Um, I am an award winner from the University of Toronto. I have my Master of Business in Administration from Northeastern University, specializing in marketing, innovation, and entrepreneurship. I'm a project manager, project management professional, have over 22 years of senior leadership experience in the public, private, and nonprofit sector. Um, 
I worked internationally in all stages of business, as I mentioned. I'm a life empowerment coach, motivational speaker. I did a TED TEDx talk, publisher, writer, and I've won a bunch of awards. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's begin. All right, so we already talked about this. We talked about what marketing is. So marketing is the process of getting people interested in your company's product or service. And this happens through market research, analysis, and understanding your ideal customer's interests. It pertains to all aspects of your business, including product development, distribution methods, sales, and advertising. That's something some people are not aware of. Like the customer service who answers your phone is marketing. The hold music, the message is marketing. Obviously, your logos and your colors are messaging, um, are marketing. But, you know, your, your packaging, every single aspect, your email signature, right? Every single thing that has to do with your business that is um, public facing is marketing because that material, that engagement, that hold music, that website, that email signature, it all delivers a message to the end user about who you are. And so you want to, you can't have a great website and then have crappy customer service because that, and we're going to talk about that in a bit, that creates a less than ideal customer experience. And so people are not going to come back to you. So you have to remember that a lot of marketing is psychology. It's not just the colors. It's not just the music. A lot of it, well, that's a part of the psychology, right? So people sometimes think that that is marketing, but it's not. It's just a part of it because marketing is really psychology. And I want to take a quick moment here because I just had this conversation with someone the other day. I'm so glad when people get this, that there's a difference between sales and marketing, right? Marketing, like I just mentioned, is the process of getting attention for your business to eventually drive sales. So that means that sales is something different. Sales focuses on working directly with those prospects and getting them to convert, while marketing focuses on sparking their interest and getting attention for your services or products or business. Marketing is the first step to getting people interested, and sales is when you nurture that lead you follow up with emails you follow up with calls um because like i said people are shoppers just like you you might have interest i'm sure you guys have signed up for emails yeah okay let me get my email and then you never open it or you never read it or you never take action right so you are a lead for that business but until that business follows up with you and basically convinces you to convert then they're a lead they're not a customer so marketing brings in the people and then sales nurtures them to the sale. So I say that because people will, like the reason I'm taking a minute for this is because, oh, I put up a post, I didn't get any sales, or I ran ads eight times on the radio station and nobody bought. And they want to get mad at the marketing or the marketing department or the radio station or the television station. But that is not how marketing works. That is not how Psychology works. People need to have exposure to you, your business a minimum of eight to 12 times before they even notice you or pay attention to you. Like they have to hear the same message over and over and over and over and over again to break through the noise to be like, what the hell is this person talking about? Like I see this ad everywhere. Like what is this? Right? So I just want to make that very clear. Just because you put up a post just because you, you know, do some marketing, you could market for a whole entire year sometimes and not necessarily convert because you're not nurturing your leads, right? You, you're not having a way for them to convert. You're not, like someone said earlier, you're not creating that community and that connection with your consumer so that they become a long time um, valuable customer to you, right? So anyway, that's that. So basically... Marketing is important. I gave you guys the 10 commandments. You have to kind of plan because a goal without a plan is just a wish. And that's why strategy is super important. Um, strategy is basically, like I said, what you have to do in the beginning, right? Just pretend it's a war. You wouldn't just be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going it because it's so competitive. You should think about it in those kind of terms. But you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to go fight a battle today and just jump into the battle. You wouldn't do that. What's the terrain? 
What, how many soldiers do they have? Do I need food? What's the weather going to be like? What do we need to pack? How heavy is it? How many people do we need? You need to plan all of these things plus contingent plans and then execute them. So we're doing this, we're launching in a week or three days and then we're doing this in three months. You have to have a long-term focus and I don't know, like a long-term vision for your business so that you can work backwards and start to plan, well, what do I need? If I want to do this, what do I need to do first? And then in order to do this, what do I need to do this? And then in order to do this, I need to do this so that you can start so that you actually hit your goal. And that is the difference between, between being strategic in your marketing and just marketing. That is the difference between, you know, the kid who can put up a website and like a, a post-secondary degree university educated chief marketing officer is that we look at strategy. There's a reason for everything. And in corporate, because we have stakeholders and shareholders, you have to be profitable. You have to answer to these people or you lose your job. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you can justify everything you're doing and work backwards from there. So again, that's where the 10 commandments comes in. Don't just do this off the cuff marketing. Oh, I better post today. What should I post about? Here's a picture of my dog. No, you have to think about your goal, your objective, your message, um, your call to action. What You got to plan. And then when you plan that way, you can plan backwards. Okay, so um, I want to sell this particular product. How am I going to sell it? I'm going to promote it on this channel. Okay, what are you going to say on this channel? What graphic design banners do you need? Who do you need to hire? How long is it going to take to do that banner? Once people click on that banner, where are they going to go? They're going to go to a landing page. What are the words that are going to be on the landing page? What's, is there going to be a video on the landing page? Then you have to have your, your lead capture form. You collect their name and their email address. Great. Then what happens? Then they're going to go into an email marketing funnel. Is that MailChimp? Is it Constant Contact? Is it Eye Contact? Is it Sender? I don't know. When they click on this ad and they come into my funnel, they're going to get an email. What's that email going to say? Is it going to be auto-deployed? Is that the only email am I going to send them? Or am I going to have a series of 8 to 12 follow-up emails? Am I going to get somebody, to, am I going to find, am I going to like do a survey so I can maybe get their phone number or find out what they like? Who is going to follow up with them and call them? Do I need to implement AI? Do I need to hire a virtual assistant, right? Unless you figure out what your vision is and your objective is and you work backwards, you will never be able to create a significant enough plan to get you the results that you want. And that is the difference between a regular marketer and like a chief marketing officer because we are very strategic. We look at the numbers, we do research and we are precise. And if you want to be successful in your business, you need to do the same thing. And even though it might seem overwhelming and it's a lot of information, there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to marketing. Again, if you follow those 10 commandments, you can create a strategy to get you the results that you want, right? So it's important to have a plan. I just quickly want to know, because I know you guys, some of you guys have international business experience. How many of you guys actually have a formal business plan or, I mean, a formal marketing plan? And if you do or do not, how do you go about marketing your business? Do you just like do you hire people to do it for you? Do you do it yourself? Do you like, how do you guys market your business? No, sorry. Who here has a formal marketing plan? And whether you do or do not, how do you go about marketing your business with or without a plan? <laughs> okay. Um, Hengame. Uh, I started with um, email marketing. Uh, okay. about one year before and I sent several emails and I see uh, nothing happens and I said okay it's normal because I received one million email marketing in one month and I don't see uh, even one of them and after that I decided go with uh, uh, send, uh, giving the flyers to healthcare uh, doctors and uh, for that reason, I was shy and I can't do that. And I started mailing uh, of them, mail the flyer with one letter that uh, 
I'm doing this, 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 and a picture one of the uh, my uh, works for the one uh, healthcare client, and um, I did this. And after that, I I was thinking about hiring one marketing um, person. Oh, okay, hiring a marketing person. Okay, so what I'm hearing for you from you is a lot of like shyness and discouragement if you don't get results. So yeah. in terms of your email marketing, again, um, I I know that it's tough for entrepreneurs starting out and it's unfortunate that you guys can't have a chief marketing officer working for you, which is why I try to teach as much as I can for free online because I feel very blessed and privileged that I'm an entrepreneur, but I've had exposure to the things that make businesses work. Whereas there are a lot of entrepreneurs that are just passionate about, you know, what they're passionate about and they want to turn that into a business, but don't necessarily have all of the tools and knowledge and resources that they need to make that succeed. And where I'm going with that, why I'm saying that is because, yeah, you sent out emails. I don't know what the email subject line was. I don't know if you tested I don't know if you had not more than nine words in your subject line. If you have more than nine words in your subject line, it's a problem. I don't know if you had too many links in your email. If you have more than three links in your email, it is more likely to go to spam, right? I don't know how many people you have on your email list. If you have five people on your email list, hey, if you have 500 or 5,000 or 500,000 or 50,000, that's different. I don't know what your open, I don't know what your open rate is. I don't know if you have 100 people on your list and only 20 people opened it and you have to understand conversion numbers. There's only a one person. There's across the board, across industries, you should bank on a 1% conversion, which means 100. This is why lead generation is important. You need 100 people to even see your thing. 90 people are going to be like, yeah, I'm not interested. 10 people will be like, okay, yeah, I'm interested. Give me some more information. Of those 10 people, some are going to decide they don't have money. It's not the right time. They're going to go with someone else. They're not interested. One person is going to buy. So you have to understand across the board, across the industries, there's about a 1% conversion rate. So again, if you only have, you know, 100 people on your email list, you may get one sale. I don't know what your call to action was. I don't know if it was clear enough. I don't know if it was too um, aggressive. There may be so many... I don't know if you have authenticated your domain name. I don't know if you're sending it from a Hotmail or email or Gmail, or if it's like a business domain. If you sent it from a business domain, I don't know if it's been verified with DMARC and this SPKIM factor, because right now Google and Yahoo are getting really strict with emails. You have to have permissions, you have to prove stuff. If your domain is not proven, then your deliverability is going to be low. So again, if you don't know these things, then who would? Why would anybody else except a chief marketing officer know these things, right? Maybe that's why your email didn't work. It's not that email doesn't work. It's just there are, there are all of these different factors. So again, that goes back to what Shantanu was asking me about the eighth commandment. You have to do testing and you have to be dense. Did you, did you, did you have a thousand people on your email address and you sent... 100 people an email with 50 with one um, subject line and another 50 with another subject line and wait for two hours to see which of those subject lines performed better before you sent it to the other 900 people. All of these things impact conversion. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just trying to make an example of the fact of why sometimes we implement these marketing strategies and they don't work is because there are all of those. And that's just email. I can I can go into that level of detail for almost any aspect of digital marketing that you ask me about. <laughs> so, you know, so that's why, like I said, it's important to have a plan um, and it's important to be very dense. And I think focus on one or two particular areas and master those before moving on to other things or trying to be on LinkedIn and Facebook and TikTok and Reels and being scattered and all over the place. And that just doesn't work. So we've got Richard, who I haven't heard from. I'd love to hear from you, Richard. And then we have Chidma, Chidma, 
I'll get it. But you had your hand up first, Chidma. So why don't you go? Chidinama. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So my business is a market research um, business. So market research and uh, business development. So what I do um, for my marketing is uh, first, I, I, I started out, I'm starting out rather by offering um, three services to chief members of commerce that have a lot of businesses under them so that they can write reviews and share um, with the different businesses that are registered under them. And then um, setting up, you know, like you said, with the business domain and all. Then on social media platforms, mostly on LinkedIn, um, okay. um, I found like the 10 top people in my sector in the area that I am. And I'm actively engaging with their posts, you know, just dropping helpful comments and all so that people who come to read from them also see me and then eventually go and check me out, right? And then um, I'm also like trying to craft a strategy with um, informational things I will be sharing, maybe some did you know facts that are relevant to my sector or maybe some helpful things just so that I have daily content that ah. um, I can be sharing as well. And that way I create top of mind awareness. And then when I eventually reach out to people, they already know who I am. Good for you. Okay, so that's your plan. Wonderful. All right, does anybody else have a formal written marketing plan? Yes or no? And if not, what is your marketing plan and how do you go about? Who wants to go next? Um, who? There was someone else I called on. I can't see whose hands are up. So you guys are just going to have to speak because I've lost the uh, little icon with people's hands up. So Shantanu, did you have your hand up? Or was there a Christopher? Maybe not. Okay. All right. If no one wants to go, we will move on. All right. So again, in looking at the Ten Commandments, know thy business and thy business be true. Know thy competitors, competitors' ways you'll never be blue. Shine thy light on what makes thou great. Okay. So who are you? Who are your competitors? What's your competitive edge or your competitive advantage? To find those things out, it's very beneficial to do a SWOT analysis where you look at your strengths, right? What are your weaknesses? And where are there maybe opportunities, other opportunities in the marketplace that you could exploit or, or leverage? And then what in the marketplace or what factors might be a threat to your business? So your strength with people that I've worked with before, um, their strength, if they sell spices, for example, it's like, okay, so everyone sells cinnamon or saffron, like who cares? But a strength might be the, um, a strength might be the quality or the potency of the particular spice, which really brings out different elements in food. And so they're able to charge more to restaurants that are at a higher price point, for example, right? That's their strength. A strength could be that, depending on who your market is, a strength could be that it's all natural or that it's environmentally friendly or that it's um, it's it's animal and cruelty free, right? A strength could be that you are a leader in the marketplace. You have 25 years experience. You have the fastest delivery time. You have the best customer service. You have the highest quality product. You have to know, again, that's the, ten, the, the first commandment, Know thy business and to thy business be true. Um, and to thy business be true part just means you should be able to say what your business is, like what it is, who it serves, um, how it transforms just really quickly in like 30 seconds or less, right? Sometimes I'll ask people what their business is and they go on and on and on and on and on and talk and they do this, that, that, and the other, and they do this and that and that and this and that. And by the time they're done, I'm totally confused and lost, right? So you just have to be very precise. My company, Marketing, we do video marketing. We do websites. We do SEO. We do video. We do PPC. We do it all. But I don't say all of that. The name of my company, again, because I am a marketing professional and I grew my business with those professional paradigms in place, my company, my logo is very simple. It's Maptum Marketing strategies, solutions, like that's it. It's marketing strategies and solutions. All those other things that I talked about can fall under that one big, um, one big umbrella. 
right? So you want to kind of have your tagline. Anyway, then you want to know what your weaknesses are. Um, your strength can sometimes be a weakness, but you have to know these things to use it in your, your marketing. So for example, your strength could be that you have um, superior quality service or products, right? However, that can also be a weakness because it means that you are at a higher price point. Therefore, you are at a, you are at a disadvantage to your competitors who may be who may have a lower a lower price point. So once you know those things, again, you follow the Ten Commandments. You'll be able to say in your marketing, "Hey, look, we know we don't have the lowest prices on the market, but that's because we have the highest quality. If you want to get inferior quality, you can pay inferior prices. But for those customers or clients who like elite service and they know they deserve the best." choose us. Very, very simple, right? Um, you want to look at opportunities so you can diversify your, your offerings or maybe have new product development opportunities or, or new service opportunities or new partnership opportunities. Um, there was a lady right before COVID. She was opening up like a alcohol bar, I believe, um, or a wine bar, something like that. And then COVID hit, so she ha she had her degree in chemistry. She was a chemist, and she knew how to make these wonderful alcoholic beverages. So she's about to open up a couple of different locations. COVID hits, all the stores are shut down. She can't do anything like that. She's like, "What the heck am I going to do?" So that was basically a threat, right? That pandemic was a threat to her business, but she turned it around and found an opportunity in it because she realized, "Hey, I'm a chemist. I know about alcohol. I can change around these out these." chemical formulas. And instead of making alcohol to drink, I can now sell ethanol as hand sanitizer and cleaned up during the pandemic, right? So you have to look at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats if you want to get ahead in business. Now, quickly, has anybody ever um, heard of a SWOT analysis or done a SWOT analysis for their business? And um, if yes, let me know. If no, let me know. And let me know who is maybe inspired to do one now. Can I get a show of hands or anything like that? All right. Yeah, okay. Let me see some more of you guys. Let me see who else is putting up their hand. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Yay, okay. So I'm gonna encourage you. We're not gonna do it now. Okay, good. So um, let me see. I see a couple different hands up. Say yes or like unmute yourself if you have done your own SWOT analysis already. Yes, I've done one before, several okay. times. <laughs> awesome, wonderful. And how did you find it beneficial or what did you find challenging about that exercise? Um, well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> oh, I like stories. <laughs> um, so I'm an independent IT contractor. Mm. And quite often, e even within clients, we need to do SWOT analysis. And on one occasion... Uh, we were in a workshop environment. Uh, I wasn't facilitating. It was uh, it was somebody else. We were looking at um, using, uh, do you remember BlackBerry? That was a Canadian firm, wasn't it? Um, it was it was use of mobile data uh, through back Blackberries for police forces, and uh, the marketing lady wanted to do a SWOT analysis, and everybody else in the room was like, oh. That's so boring. Why do we have to do that? It's never going to work. Right. But once people get into that uh, sort of brainstorming environment and you start thinking it through, it's a really good way of then sort of uh, gathering your thoughts. So somebody might say that we have a strength in one area and then somebody else will be like, but hang on a minute. Are you sure we do because of this, this and this? So you get really good discussion uh, from using things like a SWOT analysis in my view. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that feedback. That was very valuable and important. Thank you so much. Yeah. A live demonstration of what it's like, because I, I never liked it in corporate when someone asked me to do a SWOT analysis either, because they're, 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 they're time consuming, but you're right. At the end of it, you do, you do learn a lot. Okay. So I hope everybody else is inspired to at least um, do a SWOT analysis of their own. So again, you can get those pieces in place when you are sort of walking through the 10 commandments of marketing. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about um, branding and your brand identity. And like I was saying earlier, marketing is really all 
forward facing or public facing aspects of your business from packaging to website to logo to music to the images that you use to the tone is it casual is it formal all of those things um tie into your brand so your brand includes your identity your values um it helps to guide your strategy your positioning in the marketplace it takes into consideration your ethics how you communicate on what channels and methods and means you communicate you know, some of you may have heard or remember that term the the medium is the message like I, I never used to quite understand that when I first heard it but then as I evolved and became more sophisticated I understood that the medium is the message um and you want to look at once you know what your brand is then you can make sure that you're always on brand in terms of your tone or your look making sure that you're authentic and that you know Either your personality is weaved into your business or your business actually has a brand and a personality of its own. So um, we may do a demonstration in a little bit if I can manage to get everything to work. But um, yeah, we'll take a look at that in a second. So branding, the different elements to a brand. This, we're, this is what we are going to talk about now. What is branding, all the different elements of a brand? How do you develop your brand and the importance of your brand story? So branding is just the process of creating a strong, positive perception of a company, its products and services in the customer's mind by combining elements such as the logo, design, mission statement, and having a consistent theme throughout all of your marketing communications. You want your lead or your prospect or your consumer, customer, client, whatever, to have a frictionless experience. Meaning that if you guys have ever driven and on the highway or whatever, and you're changing lanes, like sometimes your lane change can be so smooth that you almost didn't even know that it happened. Right. And then sometimes if someone's coming and you got to move out of the way, it's like, you know, it's a quick jerk into the other line and uh, into the other lane. And that is the experience you want to avoid your customers or leads or prospects or clients from having. You want everything to be smooth. And it's like they don't even know that they're moving from social media to your website, to your packaging, to your customer service, because it all just feels like the same wonderful, consistent experience. I told you earlier that marketing is a lot based on psychology. And if people are going to buy from you, it's because they trust you. You guys may or may not have heard that term. People have to get to know, like, and trust you before they will buy from you, which is why I made the distinction in the beginning. Just because you're marketing a product doesn't mean you're going to sell it because you have to get them. You have to get people to get to know you. So they have to hear and see your message over and over and over again. It has to be the same message and it has to be consistent for them to start to develop that sense of familiarity and trust. And then their barriers and their walls can go down. And then they're open to receiving you and your message. And then they're opening, they're open to opening their wallets, right? Um, but so you want to make sure, and I'm saying this because Maptim, before we got into social media, I was just developing mobile apps. So Maptum, the name of my company, stands for the M stands for mobile, and the app stands for application, because I was developing mobile apps. So the M is for mobile, app is for app application, and DOM was for domination. So Maptum actually means mobile application domination. That's where the name comes from. So when I was developing mobile apps for people, some people had mobile apps, but it looked completely different than their website. So you would go to their website or you would go to their restaurant and their business, and you would have one experience, and then you would open up the app and it would it would not look the same, different font, different colors. And it's like, whoa, what the heck is this? So you create that, like I said, that experience, you know, of just suddenly going in a different lane where they're kind of like whiplash, like, oh my gosh, you know, the customer service rep that I met at the store was so nice. But when I get on the phone, your, your people are so rude. I don't want to talk to you. I, guess, I don't want to do business with you. That's why they train customer service reps to smile when they're talking or whatever. All those touch points are a part of your brand. 
and it helps you to differentiate yourself from your competitors so that you can build a loyal customer base of like raving fans, right? Think about Apple or Harley Davidson or, or, or some of those people are completely loyal to a brand. That is crazy. They don't know who the CEO is, right? They're not loyal to a CEO. That company, Apple, Microsoft, Harley Davidson, whatever the business is, McDonald's, right? They all have a, a feeling. They have a brand. So just so you know how important it is, 87% of consumers say that having a consistent experience across all online and offline traditional platforms was important to them in their experience and engaging with a brand. So again, think about marketing as it's really broad. It's not just, oh, I got to post on LinkedIn or social media or my website or a flyer, right? It is every aspect of your business. And I know, like I said, I'm covering a lot today. I don't expect you to remember everything, but I can promise you that the information I'm conveying you today is seeping into your subconscious. And at some point in time in the future, you will think about your business, you will think about marketing, and you'll be like, wait a minute, I remember Nikimbe talked about this, right? So things that you may have overlooked or passed over in the future are now being avoided. <laughs> All right, so one of the ways that you can remain consistent and kind of stay on brand, and I didn't even really know that was a thing until I got into corporate. I worked for a large prestigious university in, in the United States, and they literally have something that's like called brand police, right? Because their their brand is so important to them. I think about Harvard or something like that. You can't mess with their brand, right? And so they have brand guidelines and they have brand police. And sometimes before marketing material even goes out, it has to go, it has to be approved by legal first. Like it's kind of crazy. But in order to make sure that everybody stays on brand, because again, the higher you go up in marketing, the more sophisticated you become in marketing, you start to realize the importance of these things that you may have previously thought unimportant. But having a, a brand document or a brand guideline, it outlines basically how people should represent your brand in your business. So if you're hiring a graphic designer or a videographer, or if you have contractors or new people coming in and out of your business, um, whatever, you can give them this document so that they can have an understanding of your business, right? This is who we are. This is what we stand for. This is why we're built. This is who we serve and why we serve them and what we're trying to accomplish. This is what we're about. This is why we're passionate about our business. This is the kind of music we use. This is the kind of language we use. These are the images we use. You know, it's all laid out in a, in a document for you. So that way you remain consistent. Again, that consistency is what helps to build um, familiarity and trust and credibility in your buyer's mind and I so that they will eventually buy from you, right? So your brand document, again, starts with your, your brand story. Why did you start your business? Why are you passionate about it? Who do you help? Like, what's your story? Um, okay, yeah, what's your story? Uh, and then you have your logo, right? It's, it's gotta be recognizable. So instantly when people see it, they know. It's gotta include your, your color palette and you've gotta be very specific with the color codes so that you know, I always use McDonald's as an example. It doesn't matter where you go in the world, those yellow arches are the same. It's not like it's neon yellow in Asia, and it's not like it's super dark orangey um, yellow in Russia. It's the same, right? And that way you kind of feel like everywhere you go, there's a sense of familiarity and trust. So making sure that you have your brand colors, like it's not this kind of blue and that kind of blue and this other kind of blue and this other kind of blue because that just creates inconsistency. It's the same blue code every time, right? Um, you want to define your brand voice. Mapton, for example, it's very just, it's, I, my brand is very much like me. I speak very casually. I sign off my emails with love, Nakimbe. You know what I mean? Other marketing agencies position themselves differently so they may be formal, right? So your brand voice and your your imagery really matters. If you're going, if you're selling to an older market, obviously you're going to want to have images of older people, right? If you're selling to a younger market, you're going to have images of younger people. If you're selling to older people, you might want to use music or terms that are recognizable and familiar from pop culture of their time or use 
lingo that they know, make references that they can identify with compared to, you know, if you're marketing to a different segment. So your your brand voice your and your imagery is important. Iconography is just, you know, your style of icons that are consistent. That's all that is. So here's an example of, um, well, it's not my best example because I have another more detailed one, but these are just some screenshots from a brand document for a nonprofit in Toronto. They're called the ACBN, the Afro Business, Afro-Canadian Business Network. And um, these are their brand colors. So you can't really see it here, but they've got the color code. So whether it's their website or their social media, they always use these exact yellows this exact yellow, gray, blue, and it's consistent, right? Um, in terms of their the images that they use on their social media and their website. Now, this is the level of research. Um, somebody was saying that they do market research here. This is the level of research that sophisticated marketing goes into. So the Afro business, the Afro-Canadian business community network, ACBN, Afro-Canadian business network. I was the president of this organization at one time, so I should remember the name. But anyway, um, their mission is to help Black business owners who may not have easy access to resources to give them, you know, the training, the resources, anything that they need to help support their business in a community where they feel comfortable, as opposed to maybe going to some traditional institutions where you might not feel as welcome. Right. So when we did market research, so again, if you're unsophisticated, he might just be marketing all sorts of things. But because I came in and I sort of made their nonprofit more professional, we actually did research. Again, sophisticated marketing does research so you can make informed decisions. There was a study by the city of Toronto and there was another nationwide study of black businesses. I got a hold of those two reports. I looked at their statistics and they said of all the black Canadians, a certain percentage of them are from the continent of Africa. A certain percentage of them are like black Canadians and a certain percentage of them are like um, black, black people from the Caribbean. And they all have slightly different sort of looks, cultures, whatever. Another thing that came out in this report was what industries these black business owners were in. Um, a lot of them were in entertainment and arts and theater. Um, a lot were in restaurants. And then we had professional services like accountants and doctors and stuff like that. So those were sort of the three main industries. So when I'm preparing their marketing, if you look on the bottom here, the images that we chose specifically represent all of the different types of blacks in Canada, according to those categories. It represented all of the different types of industries that Black people were predominantly in. So we've got people in the restaurant industry. We have some professionals. You'll notice that the colors that we chose for the clothes that they're wearing, it's blue. So everything is on brand. Everything is seamless. And you can kind of feel like, hmm. So I'll have you know that even if you think that this stuff is insignificant, oh, why is my battery dying? Hold on. Even if you think this stuff is insignificant, um, these guys, when I first got on board with them, they were making $45,000 a year. And after I was able to rebrand them and change their branding and get them consistent messaging, they ended up looking more professional and credible in the marketplace. Because again, I work with Fortune 500 companies, so that's what I do. I made them look more um, professional in the marketplace. We attracted their right ideal audience. Their social media grew by 256%. And they ended up positioning, like we were talking about earlier, ending up positioning themselves in the marketplace as such professionals that the government of Canada gave them $1.13 million. That would have highly unlikely happened if they looked like some jokey mom and pop shop organization, but because they looked organized, they looked sophisticated, they looked professional, they were consistent, consistent colors, consistent brand, consistent messaging. They presented themselves as a company that the government could trust and the government invested over a million dollars with them. Before their social media, everything was just a mess, right? So this is the importance of having a, a solid brand. All right, now we have, let me see. 
Okay, we still have about 20 minutes before break, I think, and we have two more sections to cover. So now, um, does anybody have any questions about that last stuff that I talked about before I move into the next section? So that was just about branding. Anybody have any questions about branding? Okay, let me see. Is there anybody in the chat who's saying anything? Do, do, do. Marketing today is my for John. Okay, yeah. So I don't think we have time right now, but I would encourage you guys to like follow me on social media. So you can follow me by my name, which is Nakimbe, N-A-K-I-M-B-E. Last name is Baobab, B-A-O-B-A-B. -B -A -B. Um, if you want to, just for like, kicks and giggles. Um, take a look at my YouTube channel. Take a look at my LinkedIn. Take a look at my Instagram and take a look at my Facebook. And you will see that I completely execute my brand all the time. It's always blue, always gray, always orange. Those are my brand colors. Um, we've got the fist because we're a little bit brash. Maptum's marketing is all about empowering small businesses with the tools and resources they need to market their businesses effectively. So again, remember that's just a short little tagline I said. Um, marketing, Maptim is committed to supplying, empowering entrepreneurs with the resources and tools they need to market effectively. That's what I'm talking about when I say know your business and to that business be true. Not blah, 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 and talking on and on and on and on. No, Maptim empowers you with the marketing tools and resources you need to market your business effectively, done. Okay. Anyway, go on my um my social media. You'll see that my everything looks consistent. So the Facebook kind of looks like the Instagram, kind of looks like the LinkedIn, kind of looks like the YouTube channel. The colors are on brand. Um, again, the power fist. So I'm a little bit brash. Like I'm a little bit brash. Um, when I did my competitive analysis, again, I took all the proper steps to launch a business and do marketing properly before I launched it because like. I had the training to do it properly. And so um, when I launched the business, I did I did my competitive research because that's the second commandment. There was another. So I looked at all the different marketing companies in Toronto. OK, fine. Then I looked at all the, the, the marketing companies in Toronto that were owned by black business owners. And then I looked at the businesses that were owned by black females. And that was me and another lady. Her name is Nadine Spencer. So I was the president of the ACBN, the Afro-Caribbean Business Network. She is currently still the president of the BBPA, the Black Business Professionals Association. And so I was like, damn, I have competition, right? Because you have to do your competitive